Hi guys, uh, middle of June 2018, I had scheduled a conversation with a Muslim apologist named Nadir Ahmed. He had claimed people without a God belief run away from him, which made me contact him immediately to prove him wrong. After several attempts at establishing a date where he simply did not show up, well, we finally got together 14th of July. I had suggested the topic, which was embryology in the Quran, and that I would need four and a half or five minutes or so in the beginning to make a case and then we'd have a free flow conversation. And this was negotiated via email. So when we met, I had organized someone to moderate and rein us in when things get or should things get too emotional. And this worked really well, I must admit. And the format was again reiterated and agreed upon. But then after opening the conversation, Nadia decided to change everything and start himself. And how? Well, by repeating claims which have been refuted years ago, months ago, and a mere week ago. These were false claims. He was not attempting to show that embryology is indeed described in the Quran, but appeal to some people he considers to be authorities. Okay. Now, so he started off by advertising himself, okay? Then he claimed he knows as a fact that the Quran is a miracle due to the science in it and that it is inerrant. And we went over the format again. And then before commencing, I asked Nadir to define what he was talking about, which is human embryology. And he was unable to do this. I presented my suggestion, which is the study subsequent presentation of facts around the human development inside the womb of a female as an embryo. And this is until the main bodily features had developed and growth sets in as a fetus. Okay, so we're talking about the first 10 weeks where the, the development continues for another 17 or so years until all, for example, reproductive organs are fully formed and functional. And then uh, Nadia agreed on this, but demonstrated his total ignorance when he said development happens in steps, which it does not, and then says we're just saying the same thing with different words. Okay, I, I just left it to not start an argument here already. And then Nadia told me that I had said that God was people were running away, where in reality I had clearly stated that he was the one making this unwarranted and completely false claim. Because for him, it's not about facts or truth, but winning. So I reminded him about a previous encounter to ask whether he would accept facts and truth and why he was repeating the lies he was told are lies in the past. Because he was schooled regarding barriers and water masses, lights and so on. And I ridiculed his breastfeeding claims where his scientific source at the time was CNN. And then a few weeks ago with, with Harris, his scientific source was a lifestyle and fitness internet page, livestrong.com, where what they said with, with the skeleton that after 13 weeks, the bones gradually become harder and muscle tissue begins to develop at the same time. This was correct, okay, because it does not repeat what the Quran claims. And so it says the opposite, and this was his source, which says the opposite of what he thought it is saying. So, just like Subur, he does not even understand what his sources say that he brings up. So, after 11 minutes, we finally got into embryology, or so I thought, because Nadir ignored everything we just agreed on and went and simply claimed some embryologists agreed that the Quran was correct. So, when I was trying to be polite and let him go first, I expected him to say something about embryology and what is in the Quran. Instead, he was trying to do is, is take the team who wrote and co-wrote a book on embryology with the developing human and to make them look as though they were individual embryologists who all confirmed the veracity of the Quran. So where all textbooks, all scientific documentation, all papers, all embryologists on this planet are all saying A, Nadir was trying to sell us a guy, a guy he claimed is the highest authority on this planet, was saying B in a YouTube video. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> this does not represent reality and what happened. So I aborted and I pulled the handbrake, stopping him before he could launch his usual MO. Because the tactic of Nadir is to waste time and to declare victory. He initially agrees to topic and format, but then changes everything according to his needs. He makes a claim, 
ask the opponent to refute it and ask for evidence for your refutation, something impossible to provide within just a few minutes. So regardless of what was agreed upon before the conversation, he simply screams, two minutes, after a while, as though you are under some sort of time limit, which was never agreed on. Then he talks about something irrelevant, and when you go back on topic, he suggests you discuss the facts in a second debate or third or fourth debate, which will never happen, of course, and delivers a condescending, disingenuous summary, declaring himself the winner, congratulating himself, telling himself what a great and easygoing guy he is, and he runs off. <laughs> now, I did not want to go down that route. So when he started simply showing individual people delivering their opinion on something called embryology in the Quran, I aborted, but made the mistake, and I have to admit this, because I was still trying to show that these doctors were contradicting themselves, trying to show that there was a problem in their statements, and then trying to show what the problem was and what led to this situation. I should have simply left it. In hindsight, yep, I know. And that was, I know that this was my cardinal mistake, not sticking to my structure, but allowing Nadia to derail me. And, okay, just to clarify something, Muslims as such have never really invented or discovered anything significant with the single exception of the Nobel laureate some 20 years ago. So to boost their self-esteem, a Muslim from Yemen, this was Zendani, went to Cairo, was eventually asked to leave the university because he was too radical, hooked up with some very creative Muslims, this, this Naga guy, for example, was put in contact with a sponsor and proceeded to drag the Quran and Islam with it from out of the dusty corners of ancient myths and legend and put it in line with science. Now, this backfired spectacularly when scientists actually started looking at this and then dismantled the claims and, well, ridiculed the entire concept. Scientists who'd been quote mined came forward and set the record straight and others analyzed the claims in the Quran where some either simply ignored them, some laughed and some commented saying that this was just a rehash of ancient myths, legends found in the region. In, in addition, even though reputable Muslim scholars cautioned against this reliance on science, some less honest Muslim apologists simply could not let go. Zindani hired a French doctor who was working in Riyadh and at, at the court in the day, and he spent four years putting together a book where sentences and words from the Quran were re re reinterpreted and modified and squished and squashed and massaged until they resembled something in science. And this was the birth of Bukayism, because the guy who did this was a doctor named Bukay. Now, the links to reports and articles detailing the payment details have since disappeared. But I remember reading this and reading about an annual compensation of one million US dollars and the income from his book for Bouquet. What remains as a fact is that he subsequently returned to France, closed his clinic and retired. Okay, what I need to be grateful for is Nadia asking for hard evidence for this occurrence. Unfortunately, all traces have been neatly eradicated, and I can't use this any longer. I don't consider the everybody knows version or the I research this but will not divulge this right now approach to be valid, and thus I will have to stop referring to this. But at the time of when, you know, when I was talking to Nadia, I still thought those uh, links are up and, and everybody can, can read about them. It's only later when I rechecked them that I found, nope, they don't exist anymore. Now, what remains as a fact with factual evidence is that another doctor came along, an anatomist from Canada, a Dr. Keith Moore, who was also sponsored by Osama bin Laden, something well documented, and who, with his publishers, gave up one edition of one of his books. And this is also documented, he admits it, he says it, this is there. Now, this third edition of The Developing Human was modified by Zindani, not more, by the way, containing sentences from Quran and Sunnah, and this was never to be sold in a bookstore and never outside Islamic countries. Now, this book is not available for sale uh, as such. You can't go in a bookstore and buy it, but Rahil knows where you can get it. All documented and well-known, but 
I should have left it. <laughs> and I know this now. It's just at the time I allowed myself to get emotional and to get into it. I, I should have just left it. Because, I mean, more openly states he worked, okay, he worked. He, he, he did not do, he just worked in KSA, in, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But the funny thing is his CV, which I have on record, omits this region entirely. So there's something really fishy here, and this is why I, I keep on referring to it, because it is very obvious. But it's not hard evidence. I'll have to unfortunately stop this. Now also, even though he lists every single mini-publication, the third edition of his Developing Human book with the Islamic editions is not mentioned at all. And his co-authors are not mentioned in this third edition either, but reappear in later editions. Okay, so someone like TV and Perso was hired by Moore initially in, in Canada, and he co-authored several books with him. So, and, the, and they were giving each other the awards at the, in the in the um, American Association of Anatomists, which Moore founded. That's why he got this prestigious award. I mean, he's a founder. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, they co-authored several books with him. So, it's no surprise that he echoed the statements. Okay, now, I wish I'd pinned this Nadia character down on Tokyo because he would have he really had a tough time showing his claim that, he, that Tokyo confirmed what the Quran says is correct, factually, because he never did. He's not mentioned in the third edition, and he never is on record, at least not that I'm aware of, that he says anything about the Quran. It was only Perso and Moore. So, Moore made some comments in the Quran, gave some presentations, I think, two of them, and so did his sidekick, Perso, I think one of them. And that's it, that's all. Did Moore subsequently convert to Islam based on his findings and claims of divine origin? No, not at all. It, it, well, it seems he wasn't that impressed after all. So it seems neither was that impressed by the stuff that they read and why Nadia was bringing this up. I didn't quite understand why this is of any relevance anyway and why the opinions of those people should be significant. But, unfortunately, I thought I would go along and refute his claims anyway, which I now know was wrong. Okay, I reacted and engaged instead of simply dismissing them as an appeal to authority. Okay, so with this background information, I could see that Nadia Ahmed was trying to make it look as though these people were separate embryologists and all were confirming what the Quran was saying but neither were they individuals in their capacities here, but, and without any links to one another either, nor were all of them saying what Moore was saying. So, yes, actually, I, I should have let Nadir dig himself in deeper and deeper with his dishonest claims, but I knew his tactics, and I didn't want to first listen to his crap and then undo the damage bit by bit. You see, again, Nadir did not remember that he called into the gin and tonic show many years ago and boasted about scientific miracles in the Quran, like he still does today. Now, at the time, we educated and schooled him, and I remember I informed him about hydrodynamics and how he could actually see where he was going wrong, and that the description in the Quran was a mistake, not just inaccurate, but totally wrong. And I made two videos. And he commented on them, with, uh, with, you know, I debunked most of his claims, so he was well aware of his fallacies and ignorance. And this is just one of the videos. But even though he knew he was wrong, and that the descriptions in the Quran were mistakes, he is still running around peddling the same lies. Muslims and non-Muslims alike shake their heads and are not interested in talking to him due to his dishonest, disingenuous and deceptive approach. But he is so desperate to carve some more notches into his Quran that he's even offering money so that people will talk to him. That's how desperate he is. And he even provides a list of people in his presentation who have debunked his claims. And there's some here and there, Harris is there a few times, Master Arab is there, I'm there, several others we can organize. Will he really pay a thousand bucks for each one? I doubt it. So why does he say such ridiculous things? Just as an example, Nadir makes ridiculous claims, then asks others to show him scientists who disagree. And if they can't, he seems to think he has won some sort of a prize or that he has made a profound statement or something. 
not realizing that no normal person will address that ridiculous claim he has artificially constructed. He thinks that appealing to experts, saying something he does not even understand, well, then, then he's, he thinks he's making some sort of a point. And by the way he is asking, he is showing how desperate and ignorant he is, like asking for an engineer to say square tires on cars are less efficient, which is incredibly stupid, since no engineer would ever say such a thing. But Nadir was asking me to present an embryologist who had analyzed the Quran and the claims of Moore and had commented on this. It's unbelievable. Why can't Muslim apologists provide some sort of evidence for their claims? Why is every single claim regarding something natural that I touch and check wrong? Why is it that Muslim apologists have to resort to trickery and deceit? But then, even though I was appalled at this level of deception and dishonesty, I still shouldn't have lost my cool, even though I knew he was about to bail because this is what his tactic is. Because Nadir then went into his usual, he claims he needs this, this two minute speech roll, which we had agreed on was not going to happen, where even the moderator had to step in and clarify that this was not true. So even with petty things, Nadir needs to lie. And in his despair, he asked me whether there was any reputable embryologist who agreed with my position, making up some ridiculous condition. I mean, and to, him, to humor him, I agreed. And this was stupid as well. I should have just asked, listen, it doesn't have to do anything with anything. Just come to the facts. But to humor him, I agreed. And he, and this is quite, quite strange, he volunteered to look up the person I named. And when I said Professor Myers, he pretended he did not know of him and said, who is this? And then he still said, who is this? Let me Google PZ Myers, where I had not even mentioned the initials. Chapter 23, because you just demonstrated the Quran is wrong. So Nadir knew full well that he was baiting me. And when I fell for the trap, he was just a little overconfident or we would never have known. But like this, it became very obvious that he knew exactly what he was doing and he knew what PZ Mayer said and he knew that he refuted what was said. And then saying, ah, well, I think he is an atheist apologist. He's not an embryologist. He's not, he's not a biologist. He's an atheist apologist, whatever that may be. And this is the level of dishonesty that you just inadvertently come across when you are talking to Nadia Rahmed. So in the end, I insisted on delivering some facts, the introduction we'd agreed on, and started by introducing my reference, a text on embryology. And I used exactly this Dr. Moore, a textbook by Dr. Moore. Then I showed that the Quran does not mention anything found in the textbook and showed that the Quran contradicts itself and is full of mistakes on a factual level. And then after 41 minutes, he declared me the winner and left without even trying to refute my fact-based arguments. Uh, okay. Anyway, so looking back, what was good? Well, I managed to show that there is no embryology in the Quran and that the Quran is full of contradictions and mistakes, even though this was hurried and not the way that I had intended it or envisioned it. I managed to show that Nadir is dishonest, well, that doesn't take a lot, and does not even understand his own references. Well, we all know that. And then, well, I mean, we've, we've come across this frequently in Muslim apologists, haven't we? And what was not so good? Well, my usage of what um, Rob coined the PW fallacy, the Paul Williams fallacy, saying, I dealt with this a million times, but I won't respond to you now. I should have just dropped it. No matter how tempting it was or is in the future, I will drop this. When Nadir interrupted, lied and tried to continue his deceptive MO, I called him a liar and left it. That he then duly disappeared, knowing he was exposed and that everyone could see what his tactic was, is not really a consolation. And in, in hindsight, I just wish I had delivered this in a calm and more composed way. And I wish I'd, I'd just left it and, and then gone and refuted them step by step. That would have been more efficient, more effective, and it, I think, would have made more impact. 
Okay. So what lesson have I learned from this? Well, first of all, stick to the agreed format. So I, I, I sort of, we, we agreed on something and this was worked out. And then after a while, I thought, well, let me be polite. and, and, and Because I was actually afraid he was going to bail again, not show up. And I thought, now, come on, this this the guy, Kenny, uh, ran away. And now this guy's running away. So I thought, no, I really want this to happen. I really want to have this under my belt so that I can get some of my experience. Because this, after all, is the first time that I actually do this. I need to stick to this. And I need to go, if I have a topic like this, I know exactly what I'm doing. So all I need to do is say, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing and this is how we handle this. And then I will stick to it. And I need to stay aloof and stick to the planned structure that I have worked out. I cannot get emotional. I cannot get involved in it because then I, it's it's not factual anymore. And then I can, I mean, I can always iron out discrepancies later. I don't need to do it immediately. And if, if he digs himself in, well, I just make a little small note. Well, you know, talk about this, talk about this, because I'm not going to uh, agree to a, a two minutes, um, you know, backwards and forwards ever, ever. So I will have the time to refute each, each and every item. And one thing I have learned is never assume the opponent will be honest because others are watching. Now, Rob was there. Rob watched how the, the 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 whole thing was set up, what we agreed on, and still knowing full well that a moderator was there who had um, witnessed the whole thing, he went back and lied about it. So I can never assume that somebody is going to be honest. Okay, that's it. And if anybody has any suggestions or any, any comments on that, please go ahead, um, ask me. And if anybody wants any advice for future debates, I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to go and speak to Nadia Ahmed. I don't know if, I mean, I don't think it's even worth a thousand bucks. But if anybody wants advice, come and talk to me. We'll talk about it. Okay, that is my sort of summary and my musings on the topic. See you next time. Cheerio. Bye.